Welcome to another edition of Tech Tuesday, presented by Delta Media Group, where we think it really says something about Wonder Woman, that she's so cool, she can even make the 80s cool. You know? Like, that's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> so, today, we are going to take a look at customer groups in the Delta Net. Um, we've made some changes recently to customer groups, but to give you kind of the breakdown, I mean, they have been in there for... Um, as long as I can remember, actually, <laughs> in one capacity or another. But the premise behind customer groups is that it is a way that you can segment all of your customers so that you can market to them more effectively. Now, the idea is that if you have customers that are only interested in a um, specific type of property or a specific area or maybe only um, listings that are in a certain school district and you have a lot of like customers that are looking for that kind of thing, you can group them all together and then by doing so, whenever you send out any email blasts or e-cards, anything like that, you can make sure that you're sending those to the people that they will be the most relevant to. Um, at the end of the day, if you send someone information that they are really interested in, that is when they will engage with you the most. So that's the whole premise behind groups. So first off, to get there, I mean, there are a handful of different interfaces where you can see groups. Um, I mean, you can add customers to groups through their profile pages or through the groups interfaces themselves. But the easiest way to get in and kind of take a look at all of them will be to go to CRM and then click on Customer Center. Now, like the other pages in Delta Net 6, you could also type Customer Center up here into the Quick Search or Quick Actions bar or Quick Actions Search field, and uh, that'll take you straight there too. So now we'll go ahead and scroll down on this page, and you can see we have a section here labeled Customer Groups. Now the first thing you can do here is, if I'm looking for a specific group, I can just type the name of it here. Um, so if I type it closed, for example, you can see that it automatically filters down like I didn't even have to press enter. <laughs> and that gives me the result I'm looking for. And then from here, I can click on Actions, and I can view the contents of that group. Um, I can click on Labels to create mailing labels for that group, or I can click Edit if I want to make some changes to that group. I'll go ahead and back that out. Now that is a company created group and also based on this little icon happens to be one that is related to a pipeline phase. So we'll get into that a little bit here and uh, here shortly. But for now let's take a look at how about current buyers for example. Um, that is also a company created group. How about customer search group? There we go. So customer search group is a group that is specific to my account so I've created this group. Um, so from this one not only can I view it or make labels, but if I click, I can delete it because it is my group and mine alone. And if I edit it, I can go in and I can add specific customers to it here. So we'll go ahead and close that out and we'll go over that in a little bit more detail here in a bit. Um, the next thing I can do in this section is I'm showing 10 groups at a time by default, but I can extend that number if I'd like to see more of my groups on the same page. And then I can also cycle through these pages to just go page by page and see the groups on each one. Now we'll go back to page one here. Now you can see also that I have some options to sort these groups. So I can sort them by whether or not they are part of the pipeline phase. So if I click that button, right now it's going to show all the no's first, so we'll click it again. It always shows the virtual groups first, but after that you can see all of those that are marked yes for pipeline and have this little icon. It'll show those, so I have a real easy way to kind of sort all the uh, pipeline related groups to the top and see what all those are. And then I can also sort them by customer count if I want to see those groups that have the most customers or the fewest customers in them first. But again, it's still always going to sort those virtual groups to the top. So there we go. Um, now the next thing you can do here that is kind of a recent addition is I can filter this section down by type. So I can see the standard groups, which would just be a group of customers that I would add and remove customers from manually. Um, and to see those, I'm just going to uncheck the rest of these and just leave standard groups checked. So that encompasses all of those. Now with all of these groups I click on actions and labels. Again I'll print my mailing labels. Make virtual group is actually an admin only option so I wouldn't worry about that at this point. I can click view to just see all of the contacts that are in that group. And this interface allows me to go page by page to go through them. I can click on view to view that customer's profile page or if I'm looking for a specific customer in this group I can type their name in and it'll narrow that down for me. Now, as you can see, I can also type in an email address or part of an email address, and you can see it'll narrow those down as well. So that's also a handy way to be able to cycle through those groups or filter that down if I'm looking to see if uh, someone specific is in there. So we'll close that out. 
And the next thing I can do is I can edit this group. Now from here I can change the name. I can attach a color to this group, which is kind of neat. So we'll add a color and let's make it a nice orange. Why not? <laughs> Um, the next thing I can do is I could convert this to a virtual group if I wanted to by just having the customers that are in it defined by some criteria here as opposed to specifically choosing which customers go in it and we'll go over that a bit more when we go through creating groups. Uh, but for now this part works the same way so if there is or basically the same way as the view functionality. So if a entry is checked that means it is within the group and if it's unchecked that means it is not in the group. And then what I can do here is I can look for specific people. So let's say that, um, how about, let's say that that person is not actually in this group. So they're unchecked right now. And I wanted to find them. I could just type their name in here. That narrows it down to that customer I'm looking for. Or again, I could type their email address also. And I'll just check that box and that puts them in the group. So once you have everyone who you want in the group checked and everyone who you do not want in the group not checked, <laughs> you just click the Save Group button at the bottom and that sets the people in those groups. And you can see that it also changed the color for me here. So the next thing I can do is I can go up here to Standard Groups and we'll just look at the virtual groups. So virtual groups consist of groups that the company has gone in and defined. So the company has created this group and filled it with customers and now I can use that group if I want to send an email out to those customers. So um, your company may or may not have set up a group like that, but know that that is one of the types of groups that will show up here. It will also display customers or customer groups that were created automatically to house customers of a certain status. Um, now these groups don't update instantaneously. There's a process that runs that updates them. But right now it's looking at every customer I have with a status of active is going to be in this group. Um, everybody that is classified as a marketing customer, so that's basically anyone that is assigned to me that is not set to inactive, and by assigned to me I mean they weren't, um, they're not customers that I've delegated to somebody else, they're not customers that are shared with me by another agent, they're actually assigned to me directly. Those are considered marketing customers, so those go into this group automatically. And I will have another group here, another virtual group, for every status type that I have customers in. So if I go down here, and I select one of my customers to open their profile page and I'm going to edit profile and we'll just go down here and change the status to close transaction and then save it. Now you can see it shows the virtual group association here but on the actual customer center groups interface it's not going to show that right away. So we'll go back down here to groups. You can see these remain the same, but later on it'll add that group in and have that customer in it so that I can send marketing materials to just those that have closed transactions. Now the next piece we have here is we'll just go down and clear out those two. And the last we have is pipeline phases. So these are company created groups that are actually specifically defined as pipeline groups. Um, these all relate to the sales pipeline interface. So that is something that um, we will have you know, additional videos that go over that in more detail. But for now, just know that if you want to see all of the groups that will add things to that pipeline funnel or that sales pipeline interface, these are the groups that you would add them to. And with this filter, that is a very easy way for you to see those. Now the other thing I can do here is I can click on Actions and I can view the contents of those. Or if I click on Edit, I have the ability to kind of add a custom color or a custom name to this group, but it still functions the same way as far as how it shows up in the pipeline interface. Uh, so we'll close that out. Now the other thing I'll add is there are company groups that can be created that will actually show up here among standard groups. So with those groups, um, they work just like a regular group that I created myself, so they'll only show my contacts that are within that group but the company did create them. So the big difference there is that I can't delete them because they're available to everyone in the company. Um, and it's just a, a way that the company can create a kind of consistent way that um, customers can be segmented or groups that show up consistently from one agent to the next. So I only see my customers in it. So if another agent has added customers to that same group, I can't see those. I can only see mine, but um, it is a nice way that the company can keep things consistent that way. And it give me an extra group if they have groups or ways that they want to suggest that I group that my customers. So there you have it. That is uh, the basic rundown of the front end of the customer groups interface. So let's take a look at creating a group. So we're going to go back to all groups here. There we go. So now we're showing everything. Now if I want to create a new group, I'm going to go up here and click on add new group. 
I'm going to give my group a name. Uh, we'll call this one Zillow Contacts because we're going to set it up in a specific kind of way. The group scope is going to be set to private automatically. Um, the company can set public groups that show up for everyone, but from the agent level you can just create groups that show up for you. I can then give it a custom color like we did with the other group, or I can just leave it alone and it won't have a color attached to it. And then next I can define who is going to go in this group. So from here I can choose a couple of different things. So we'll skip over this virtual group section. Now the first thing I could do is if I wanted to create a group that had um, say all of my Google contacts in it. I'm going to go ahead and select all these Google contacts. And then if I were to create this group, it would take everyone who is currently in these groups and put them in this newly created group also. Um, now it only does that at first, when I first create the group, and then from that point forward, this is just a regular group where I'll go in and add and remove customers manually. So in addition to defining the initial customers that go into this group and then manually going through and adding customers or removing them from that point, you can set this up as a virtual group of your own. So it'll show up under that virtual groups filter in the main group interface. Um, but to do that, what I can say is instead of defining the customers manually, what I want to happen here is I want this group to automatically get filled in with customers based on either their request type, their initial request source, or some combination of those things. So to give you an idea, if I wanted to create a group that only showed people with showing contacts, um, or with showing requests attached to them. <laughs> so these would be people that have gone to the website and they have requested a showing on a listing. And I wanted to be able to market to those customers separately and to say, um, you know, I want to send a email blast out to just those that have contacted me about a showing. Or um, I want to set them up for a campaign and I want those campaign emails to only go to those that have requested showings. I can do that by setting this request type to showing and I would just make my group name showing requests or something just to indicate to me that that's what it is <laughs> and then go down and save it and then this group will be filled in automatically with only those that have made those showing requests so it allows me to market to them very easily without going through customer by customer and finding everyone that has asked for a showing on a property now I can do the same thing or a combination really I can combine these two things based off this initial request source also. So I'll go to initial source and let's say I wanted only the Zillow leads. So I'll type out Zillow. So these are the ones that have come to me through Zillow Tech Connect if, if I have that set up. Um, but that's just an example. So I can close that out and I can choose any one of these sources or any combination of these sources. To do that I would just go through and put a check mark next to the ones I want to include and no check mark next to the ones that I don't. So we'll close that out. We'll leave this on showing requests and just kind of go with that. And then we'll get rid of these and we'll go down here and hit save. There we go. So now I have a showing request group. So we'll type in showing. And it was already on top so I didn't need to do that. But <laughs> you can see that it picked up seven of my customers have made a showing request so it automatically populated this group with those customers. Now furthermore, like any other virtual group, if I go to Actions, I can view it. If I go to Edit, I can't actually select customers that are a member of this group because this virtual group rule is handling that for me. And then as I mentioned before, it shows up among my virtual groups. So if we go here and select just our virtual groups, I unselected it, there we go, we'll select it. <laughs> then you can see that Showing Request shows up in there. So it is a nice way that you can have those groups populated automatically. Um, based on some criteria that would be useful when it comes to marketing out to your customers. So that's really what the group system is all about, going in here, segmenting your customers. Um, now the other thing to add with the group system is that you can have one customer in more than one group, and then if you were to send an email to both of those groups, that person would only get the email once. So it won't send out, you know, if I have the same customer in showing requests and then also have them in uh, Google My Contacts and in this open house group, then I put all three of those groups into a single email campaign that sends out an email every week. That customer is not going to get three emails every week because they're in all three groups. They're just going to get the one. Um, now the other thing of note here is that there are some standard groups that are created. I mentioned the Google one specifically, um, but Office 365 would be the same way. And if I'm using Open House Connector, that also works the same way. So if a customer signs in through Open House Connector and I'm using that, and we have some videos that go through Open House Connector in real detail there. 
but if a customer does sign in through Open House Connector and they're added to my system that way, they will automatically go into a group for that particular Open House. So I can easily segment those and very easily go in and say, you know, I want to send out an email blast to everybody that went to this specific Open House. So you would go into the email blast system, say send to this group, type out your content, and hit send. So um, you can see how powerful groups can be and how much you can do based on these. Um, so the last thing I will add about customer groups is that you can also take these groups and use them in the customer list functionality. So I can go to an advanced search and customer list and I can not only say show me all the customers in this group, I can say show me all the customers that are in this group and in this group but not in this group. Um, so I can get really specific with the kind of customers that I return and those that I market to. So there you have it. That is the customer group system and how groups are kind of meant to work. And um, But be creative. <laughs> At the end of the day, I mean, use them in the way that makes sense or makes the most sense for you for how you uh, market to your customers and how you run your business. So as always, thanks a lot for joining me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, send an email into support at deltagroup.com or give us a call and we will be happy to walk you through whatever you need. Uh, thanks a lot and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.